What's up, guys? Listen, um, I know this is a prim primarily a silver and gold uh, channel, and we stack precious metals, but uh, I'm going to make the case on why we need to really, really start stacking some Bitcoin while it's on sale right now. Um, guys, silver, gold, and, and, and platinum are kind of like in the same group. They're precious metals, and we use them for... Um, our preservation of wealth. You know, you know, we really don't look at it as like get rich quick or anything like that. Um, but we use it because we know the CBDCs are coming. It's outside the um, banking system. We want our freedom. We want decentralized assets. And again, we know the CBDCs are coming and we want to have something to fight against that. Well, in my opinion, uh, nothing fights the CBDCs uh, better than this right here. Um, Bitcoin. Now, your Bitcoin is not actually on this. This is a cold storage. Um, this is a ledger. And this basically um, lets me go to the ledger app and I don't own it. I mean, I don't have my Bitcoin on an exchange or a hot wallet. This is a cold storage. And um, if I lose this, all I got to do is just get another one and put my passcode in. And then your Bitcoin is on um, the blockchain. It's not actually on this. It's not a USB or anything like that. I can lose this and buy a whole bunch of them. But you cannot lose your 24-word uh, or 12-word password. They have ways to protect that. But anyways, it's your money it's being your own bank. I'm going to let you listen to a young lady, lady named Leah. She's a Bitcoin expert. She's also good friends with Andrew Tate. Uh, she's a freedom fighter, and she's going to make her case on uh, why we need Bitcoin uh, against the CBDCs. Check it out. Well, it's very simple. Central bank digital currencies are programmable. So it essentially means that it's a much more easier way to push um, agendas, political agendas. For example, the World Economic Forum is talking about um, implementing a, um, a carbon allowance. So every individual will be given a certain amount of carbon that they are allowed to emit into the atmosphere. With a central bank digital currency, this becomes far more efficient because with a click of a button, you literally just program the money. And so if for whatever reason you buy too many burgers, too many sausages one week, when you go to fill up your car, your money could be cancelled. It could get declined simply because you you use too much of your carbon allowance, essentially. Or even if you go to um, buy a plane ticket, it could get cancelled because you bought too many burgers, you bought too much meat that week. So it's much easier to push forward political agendas and political ideologies when you have money which is programmable with just a click of a button. I mean, I couldn't have said it better. I mean, it's a it's a it's a digital money. Um, you guys know that we're going to a castless society. I mean, they're, that's what they're trying to push us to. And we need we need both. We're on the same team. Like right? Democrats and Republicans. Um, the reason why they get on my nerves is because we're all Americans. Right. If another country comes and tries to attack us, we have to get together and fight against the, the foreign invaders. Right. Or as human beings, if an alien nation came down, we'd all have to fight uh, for our planet. Right. Uh, I look at Bitcoin and silver and gold and platinum as, as the same thing. I, I I go on Reddit or I go on different um, places listening to them, and they say the Bitcoin people say the exact same thing as silver, and silver and gold people say the exact same thing as Bitcoin people. Except they they think that we need Bitcoin to fight against the CBDCs and the and the and those evil people, and vice versa. We need the and uh, we need the uh, precious metals. We need both guys, okay? We need physical assets and we need our digital assets. We are about 92 to 95% in the, in the world um, as far as money or you know, however you want to call it, dollars or whatever. It's mostly digital, right? And when we're transacting, guys, in the future, I don't think we're going to be able to be transacting in, in physical metals. I think we're going to be transacting in, in digital, and this is going to be yours. Now, it's a little clunky right now because it's only 14 years old. But in the few, next few years, it's getting better. The Lightning Network's on top of it and everything else. So uh, let's see what uh, Leia has to say next. It's not really money, is it, a central bank digital currency? It, it's more of a, an outward demonstration of your, uh, your uh, obedience to, to whatever is the message of the day. And, and you get rewarded with a certain amount of purchasing power. Exactly. So in Canada, for example, during the height of the pandemic, if you didn't want to get vaccinated and you just wanted to um, protest bodily autonomy, you would have your money um, and your bank account shut down and declined because you weren't a good citizen. So with a central bank digital currency, it doesn't matter what your opinion is. If you do not hold the correct opinion and if you're not a good citizen, then absolutely that money will um, will be programmed to be used against you. Even in the height of the pandemic, you had to be chaperoned to go into certain stores. So it creates a far more efficient way to discriminate against certain people. You don't need that middleman anymore. Again, with a click of a button, if you're not a good citizen, your money will be programmed to be used against you. Leah, you notice I introduced you specifically as a Bitcoin enthusiast among a dizzying collection of cryptocurrencies. 
And you and many others insist Bitcoin and Bitcoin alone is safe from state interference. Why are you able to say that that is so? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So Bitcoin is completely decentralized. There's no CEO, there's no council, there's no one founder that um, can program the money or do anything. It's completely decentralized. So it's fully immune from any form of government intervention. People get quite confused because sometimes if you hold your Bitcoin on a centralized exchange, then of course the government in that country can tell the exchange to shut you down. That's very um, that's very common and that, that can happen. It happened in Canada during the protest when she's talking about exchanges she's talking about like coinbase cash app venmo anything any on-ramp that you can buy bitcoin on and then just let it sit there guys it's just like money in the bank if you have your cash or your you know your cash and your digits on the screen inside of a bank you don't own it and we we all know this is the same exact thing with bitcoin if you buy it on uh, cash app coinbase whatever exchange you use and you don't take it and put it onto a cold storage, not a, not a hot storage, because that's still on the internet, a cold storage, um, you don't own it. Um, when they talk about physical metals, what do we say? If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Not your keys, not your coins. But if you hold your Bitcoin in the correct way, which means you take absolute custody of it, so there's no middleman, then nobody can touch it. It's just you and the Bitcoin. Also, it's completely anonymous. So there's no KYC. There's no what they call know your customer regulations, whereby you know you have to identify yourself with that money. It's completely anonymous. So whatever your opinion is, nobody has access to your Bitcoin and nobody can um, shut it down. Couldn't agree more. So that's that's the first interview. Then there's a second uh, short one, too. But yeah, you know, when 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 the, when you, we have the CBDCs, guys, um, they're going to roll it out, I believe, um, when, you know, we, we reverse course the uh, interest rates. They have to, you know, pause because we're already we're already reverse course. And now we're going from point seven five interest rate bump for four times in a row down to point five. I think we'll do another a half a point. Then we'll do a quarter of a point. Then they're going to pause. Then they're going to pivot. And then once they pivot, what are they going to do? They're going to start printing money again. And when they start printing money, um, you know, they're going to incentivize for the and, and they're getting ready for the 2024 election. Trust me. And only them, only thing Democrats can do is do what they do best, print money and give away money. They're going to start implementing. Um, and if, the, if this uh, this is at the CBDCs already, they're going to start implementing um, uh, this because they already did a trial run, a 12 day trial run of the CBDCs because um, what's name is already doing it. China's doing it already. And if you want to uh, interact, um, I, I suggest you get some Bitcoin now while it's cheap um, and then just hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And then, um, you know, because I believe these assets are going to skyrocket once they start doing that. But when they do the pivot and they do start reversing uh, interest rates and lowering them down and they start uh, printing money and giving it away, I think they're going to start giving it away on the CBDC. So let's see what she says in the next interview. Social commentator and Bitcoin expert, Leia Halpen. He joins me to break down the potential digital cash nightmare looming and how it could be used to force eco extremism on all of us. Hi, Leia. Hi, good to see you. Thanks for having me. OK, so are we talking here about the complete elimination of cash? If we had some spare notes under the mattress, would they be worth anything? They could be worth something, um, but equally, they could also be worth nothing. We don't really know yet whether cash would be um, not um, not accepted in um, certain stores. But Yeah, that's happening right now. I, I've seen many, even in Las Vegas, you know, as much money and cash is, is here. There's a lot of stores and, and outlets and stuff that don't take cash. And I don't I don't I don't uh, I don't mess with them, man. Because if some if a place doesn't take cash, that means they want you to take a credit card or something else, and that means they can track you. So I definitely don't want to mess with those. But think about it in your area. How many places don't take cash? Think about it. But what we do know is that central bank digital currencies are certainly coming. Um, we saw the um, the president of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, she was talking about um, them coming this week, even in the US. Um, Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, was also talking about the lack of anonymity that um, a central bank digital currency would have. And we also know earlier this year at Davos, they were talking about the tyrannical nature of a central bank digital currency and that a new bill of rights, something sort of to that effect, would have to be drawn up to ensure that 
that um, people's rights and liberties aren't impinged on. Um, that doesn't give me any confidence um, in the future of it because we know that whatever kind of bill of rights is drawn up, they'll just you know throw it in the bin, a bit like they did with the Nuremberg Code and the vaccines. Um, you know, when you're not allowed to co coerce people into taking uh, foreign substances. That's right. Remember when uh, the philosophy of doctors was first do no harm. That went out the window mm -hmm. with the vaccine, didn't it, Leia? Um, and let's talk about who wants this. Who's pushing for a cashless society? Is it our government? Is it other governments? Or is it an unelected elite? Well, I believe it is the unelected elite, which is in control of all governments. So the World Economic Forum are talking about actually bringing out a carbon allowance. So each individual in this world will be given a carbon allowance, which means there's a certain amount of carbon that they are allowed to emit. This is easily put into effect through a central bank digital currency because the currency is programmable. It's digital, which literally means it can be programmed to be spent on certain things. And people might say, you know, this sounds pretty crazy, but I think it's totally realistic. If you just look at the um, the height of the COVID pandemic in Canada, for example, you had if you weren't vaccinated, you had to be chaperoned to go into certain stores to ensure that you only bought essential items because you know you're unvaccinated and therefore you know you're you're dirty and dangerous. So with a central bank digital currency, what that basically means is it's a lot more um, efficient now to um, to uh, discriminate against people because you don't need to have those COVID marshals. You just program the money so that unvaccinated people can't spend that money on certain items. Um, there's also really uh, another dangerous thing, which I just want to um, explain mm -hmm. as well. The money can also actually expire. So what this means is during times of um, economic uncertainty, central banks actually like to um, print more money in order to stimulate the economy because they need that money to change hands. So we could get to a situation whereby they say, um, OK, guys, you know, for your greater good, of course, we need to stimulate the economy. If you don't spend, let's say, 10 percent of your current savings, what you have sitting in the bank in the next three months, that money is going to expire. Um, and that's pretty awful. It means, you know, you can't build long lasting generational wealth. It means you're forever a slave to the nine to five. Now, I know many of you already knew that with the CBDCs, they're going to um, have them expire and stuff like that. They're already doing that in China. Like I said, they're still in the beta taste testing uh, mode right now. But that is absolutely true. You will own nothing and be happy. They're not kidding about that, man. So, again, they control what you spend. They watch what you spend. They won't need any more IRS agents because they're going to tax you right there on the spot. They're going to know when you spend it, how you spend it, what you like, what you don't like. And if you don't do what they say on Facebook or on this social media and that social media and your social credit score is not up to par, um, they won't let you go on certain flights or do this or do that. And also the money expires. That is absolutely insane. It sounds like the end of human rights, the end of personal autonomy and the idea of a carbon allowance, that essentially rations the number of flights we can take every year, uh, possibly how much we drive our car or if we own a car. It might even be that we can only have steak once a week. This is the extreme uh, outlook if we, uh, if we are slaves to these digital currencies. Absolutely. It's really concerning. And again, I always like to look back to what happened over the last two years. They literally limited how much time we were allowed to spend with our loved ones. We weren't allowed to go into hospital to see, um, you know, elderly um, family that were dying and that were sick. So to think that they wouldn't um, limit what we're allowed to spend on certain items would simply be naive. Um, you know, you could go to fill up your car, but it, the, your central bank digital currency gets blocked or refused because, you know, you bought too many plane tickets. And I don't think people understand the severity of this. Money is literally the energy which fuels your life. If you do not have freedom of money, you don't have freedom of anything. You know, you can't buy that ticket to go to uh, protest the lockdowns. You know, you can't, um, you know, feed yourself with the kind of food that you'd like to feed yourself. You know, maybe, you, you know, your money only works to eat bugs because you, um, to buy bugs, sorry, because you bought too much meat this week. So when you control the money, you control the world. That's right. Eating bugs. That's, that's the thing they keep talking about. Uh, Bill Gates and, and the rest of the uh, evil crew uh, don't they they want us to not eat meat. They want us to start eating bugs. And meanwhile, they'll eat meat, of course, and they want to take our guns. Meanwhile, they'll have guns. Um, and then the carbon print, like they said, how much gas you're using, what kind of fuel you're using. Um, they're doing that because um, <laughs> it's not because, you know, it's it's the climate change and all that. It's it's 100 percent about control. We know that. 
I got my a notepad out here. We're going to go over some things in a second. That's right. This is not science fiction. It's not a conspiracy theory, is it, Leia? The smiling fascist Justin Trudeau in Canada froze the bank accounts of truckers who were simply protesting against vaccine passports. And China has the social credit system. Uh, this is real. This is not a drill. Explain how it works in China and why we must resist. So essentially, um, because China is that communist state, um, that communist nation, everything that you do is monitored and tracked. So if you say the wrong thing, you like the wrong thing on social media, on their version of social media, then you're given a credit score. And if your credit score falls too low because, you know, you held that wrong opinion, um, then your money will be refused. So you and I simply having this conversation could potentially bring our social credit score a little bit lower. So, you know, if I'd like to buy a plane ticket back to England so I can come on your show um, or I can see my family, Family, my social, my, my CBDC, sorry, could get um, refused because I had this conversation with you bringing my social credit score lower. It's a little bit like actually uh, Black Mirror, if you've seen it. Black Mirror is literally just this Netflix program, which shows us a very realistic tomorrow. That's terrifying, man. Um, I got to watch that, 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 that documentary and never even heard of it. So I wrote some numbers down, guys. Um, I wrote some market caps down, wrote it down for gold. Uh, these are different websites I went to, but basically gold is around 10 to 12 trillion. That's around the number that I got. Silver is 1.363 trillion. Well, I didn't write that good. And uh, Bitcoin got up to over a trillion, but now it's on a dip. Well, actually, it's up today, but it's uh, it goes from 326.3 billion to 331 uh, billion. And then platinum's right around 277 to 280 billion. Um, guys, uh, if this, if the global market, uh, this was the entire global market of money, uh, all of that, that little, whatever trillion that is, what is it? 12 is 113, I don't know, maybe 14 trillion, close to 14 trillion, something like that, uh, would be a, a, a speck of dust like that, and you wouldn't even see it. Um, compared to all the global assets, okay? Guys, uh, gold, silver, platinum, and Bitcoin. And I got a little bit here for you. Um, here's the Bitcoin uh, ledger. Here's a platinum. Here's a gold back. Here's some silver. Um, compared to the debt market, the bond market, the equity market, the real estate market, the you name it market, um, uh, the CBDCs, the cash, and everything else. Uh, this is a tiny fraction of those things. But the thing, the thing is, these assets do the same thing, but a different way, right? Uh, for libertarians, for freedom fighters like ourselves, uh, we need both. We need the physical, but we need the digital. Because when we go to transact and stuff like that, you know, cash is great right now. But you heard what she said, and you know what's going on in your area and in my area. Cash right now, a uh, place that are taking cash are getting lim more limited and limit limited. They're keep, you know, every other year it's less cash. I, I seen a place and look at this right here. This is a place I get steak sandwiches from. They don't take 50 or $100 bills. Why would they not, not take 50 or $100 bills when there's so much money out here? You mean, tell me the biggest bill you'll take is a $20 bill. Hmm, I wonder why. Then there's places that got ch change shortages. There's some places that don't have change, period. There's some places that need exact change. Then again, like I said, they don't have cash at all. So um, we're on the same team, guys. Um, we're we're in a digital uh, age now where, I, like, again, it's 92 to 95 percent uh, digital. And when they do go to the CBDCs and you have to transact in digital uh, uh, transactions to buy your things, um, I, I highly suggest, guys, you get you some freedom digital uh, uh, asset. And that's Bitcoin. I mean, and, and we're early. We're only 14 years in and less than 5% of the uh, population have it. So it's on a dip right now. It's, it's from its high of 69,900 and something dollars. It's at 17,000, 16,000, whatever. And it's on a dip, just like gold and silver. If silver dropped down to 10 bucks right now, and let's say this coin shops only had a 2 or $3 markup on it, and they were 12 to $13 an, an ounce, you'd be going out there to try to, to try to get it. And that's only, you know, that's a 50, 60% drop. Um, you know, Bitcoin's 75% drop, man. So again, we're all on the same page. Uh, I hope I, uh, I convinced you to at least buy a little bit of Bitcoin. I'm not telling you to buy a lot, you know what I mean? Cause honestly you may not need a lot, need a lot. Now, how does Bitcoin work? Uh, Bitcoin, 
one Bitcoin is 100 million what we call Satoshis. One Bitcoin. And you can buy Satoshis um, when you buy Bitcoin. You don't have to buy uh, all uh, one Bitcoin at once. So Bitcoin, $17,000. Uh, for me, I, I try to buy 100,000 Satoshis a day, which costs me about 17 bucks uh, a day. I try to get that much so I can, as soon as I buy it off of my exchange, I transfer it over um, on my cold storage. But yeah, Bitcoin is, uh, it's it's fast. It's 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 the best digital money in the world. It's the strongest and most safe and secure network in the world. Um, and, and to me, it's, it's it's the closest thing to perfect digital money. You know what I mean? I, 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 I truly believe one day and I and I have the benefit of, um, you know, seeing a lot of things. And I'll make a video about this tomorrow. But I, I seen when the Internet first started. I'm 48. I seen when Amazon first started. And I, I remember what everybody said. And Bitcoin uh, adoption is faster than the internet and Amazon. Um, so, yeah, guys, we're early. Uh, get it while you can. You, you're always going to be able to get it, but do you want to get it at 250000 or 300000 or 800000 a coin when everybody else is getting it? Or do you want to get it at 17000 a coin? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I love each and every one of you. Uh, if you like my videos, hit the like button only if you like it. If you like my channel and my videos, go ahead and share it. Guys, am I sharing stuff with you? We love this stuff, you know? I'll, I'll make a video about gold and silver uh, specifically, uh, but we need them all, man. Bitcoin, platinum, gold, silver, cash, Bitcoin, all that stuff. All right. I, let, I love each and every one of you. I love God. Love your family. Love this country. And I'll keep your head on the swivel. Make sure you go and do some push-ups. Run around a little bit. Get your get your mind, body strong. Uh, get your pew-pews and uh, do your thing. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace and love, guys.